In this tutorial we're going to cover how to create a picnic table and put it inside of Unity the game engine so that we can walk around and explore it. So we're going to cover how to build it, texture it, uh, unwrap it, and put it into Unity. Alright, so to get started let's close that out and we'll start over. Um, back to the desktop and let's delete our project. Alright, so uh, I first Google searched what a picnic table would look like, just typed in picnic table, came up with this image, uh, there's lots of other images you can go with, but this one looked, looked uh, simple enough. So I saved that one to the desktop, and I should have a copy right here. So I saved a copy of it, and then inside of Maya, uh, we're going to start building that. So the first thing I want to do is take the box, click on that, and it drops a box on the screen. Um, I can either type the numbers in here or scale it manually. Uh, let's say I wanted to go with um, 12 by 1 by 0.2 or something. Probably the other direction, 0.2 this way by 1 that way. Alright, so I have kind of more of a board, I guess. If I wanted to be any thicker, I can make it thicker. Let's say one. Oops, 1.6. Okay, the other direction. 0.4. That might be too thick. Let's go 0.3. Alright, so that's kind of a thickness of a board, I guess. So we have the picnic table board. Uh, so instead of making the picnic table with all these boards, it's better to unwrap it the first time, because once you unwrap the UVs, uh, they'll all carry over every time you copy one. So, let's go and put some textures on there. So, window, red rendering editor, hypershade. Click on that window, and we're going to create a new Lambert. So I click on Lambert, Lambert 2 pops up. I'm going to double click Lambert 2, and that'll bring up these settings right here in the attribute editor. Um, I can also middle mouse drag, so the scroll wheel push down, drag it across, and that puts Lambert 2 on our object. It doesn't change because it's still gray, but it's on there now. Um, I can rename this uh, texture picnic table. And then let's go grab a texture. So I'm going to grab this uh, from the file. And I've already saved a uh, texture on the desktop, which is the wood plank. Um, so in order to find a wood plank texture, let's say I Google searched a uh, long wood plank texture. You could just say a wood plank texture. And you get lots of different um, textures. If you say wood grain, you'll get wood grain kind of zoomed in, kind of like this. Uh, but if you do uh, wood plank, you get a whole bunch of options. So I decided to go with this one, which kind of looked like the picnic table image, um, similar to this one, but you could pick any other kind of, I guess like stained wood or whatever, uh, to create your texture. All right, so once I did that, I right click saved image as, put that on desktop, and that's what I'm going to be pulling into Maya right now. So that's the wood plank. So I'm going to open this one, and that puts the wood plank texture on this shader on our object, but we don't see it because we're not in texture mode. The shortcut, or the button is this one, the shortcut is six on the keyboard, and that puts a texture on there. As you can see, the texture doesn't work very well, so let me um, minimize that. Let's pull up the UV editor, and it's going to be blank inside of here until we click on an object, so I'm gonna grab the square, or the rectangle, and you can see what's happening is that the UV coordinates are a bit off on this, so I need to re-UV this. Uh, so I can either do this as one big object or I can do this one piece at a time. So I'll probably do, just do one piece. So let's go grab face, grab this top face. I'll go to UV planar with settings. And since the green is the perpendicular angle, I wanna make sure the green is Y, not the X or the Z. Bounding box, so it creates a nice square picture of it. And press apply, and it creates a nice square on our UV image. If I turn off the um, the picture, you can kind of see the orange border a little bit better. If I turn it back on, it's kind of harder to see. But it's also kind of sideways. So I need to rotate this um, about 90 degrees. And then now it's showing every board on our picture. But we only need one plank. So I'm going to scale this downwards until it's about the size of one plank. And then I can go to move slide this over to one of those um, areas and I'll fine-tune it after I do the rest of the pieces. So as you can see we now have a board 
rather than a sideways bunch of cut lines. Um, if I wanted to be a little more particular now, I just go over to this guy. You'll say I go to face mode, grab this. I can scale this a little bit smaller and move this directly on top of there. And now I have mostly one board. Cool. All right, so let's repeat this process for the rest of them. Uh, so I'll click on the face I want, apply. Let's grab the other one and apply. Grab this one, apply. Grab this one. And because now it's a different angle, this is now the X angle, I'm gonna change this to the X axis. Apply and apply. So now I've broken off all six of those pieces. Um, I could have just rearranged them manually, uh, but this way it kind of scales them. Um, actually, get, I guess it wouldn't have mattered. So I'm going to go grab all these things now, select all of them, and go to Polygons, Unfold, Options, and let's go to Legacy instead of the Unfold 3D, so Legacy, and I usually like to make this setting 10 instead of like 5,000. Uh, and then press apply. And it should scale everything a lot more proportionally to what we need. Uh, but they're still kind of larger than what we need. So I'm going to turn the texture back off to see it's a little clearer. Now let's go to face mode, grab this guy. And I can move him over and see that this is this guy right here. So let's rotate him. and move them next to the other one. And this guy is a side piece, again needs to be rotated. I'll put them over here. Actually there's two underneath of them, so I'll just overlap both at once and move both at once. And these two are very, very small, but they came in very large, so I'm gonna to go to scale and scale those down a lot more because they're end caps and they can be a lot smaller. Uh, but again, these also need to be rotated. So let's rotate those vertical. All right, and let's put the picture back on so I can see what I'm working with. I'm gonna grab one at a time and say this one can go there and this one can go there. And that puts a wood grain on the side. Uh, this one has wood grain on the side also, but let's try and clean this up a little. Uh, looks like that one covers the whole board. They both cover the whole board. Uh, this one needs to be a lot thinner. I'll pick a different board, let's say. This one, maybe. All right, and that's the back side, nice and clean. And this one on the front side, scale him down some more. All right. And then let's go back to object mode. Now that the UVs are done, and you can see that we have a nice clean board, and this board we can reuse for everything else. And because we've unwrapped and textured one of them, and here we have the uh, settings for all that, I can make these a little more condensed if I wanted to, go to face mode, and just kind of move all these on top of there. So if I wanted to use this texture space for something else, I could erase off these half of the boards and uh, save it for something else. Uh, let's go back to object mode now and we'll take this board and let's move it upwards to start building our picnic table. Slide it off to the side this way. Then control D is duplicate. I'll slide this over and I can take two at once. Control D, slide these over and control D again and this should build the top of the table. And we have four boards and all of the UVs are exactly the same. You can see it's not changing here because they're, they were created and duplicated after they were unwrapped. Uh, the next step, uh, these look very consistent and uniform, so let's rearrange these a little bit. So I'm going to take number two and go back to the main attributes, clicking that button right there. Or the main channels, I guess. And let's start rotating this. So let's go to rotate. I'm going to rotate this guy whichever direction this is. Looks like it's probably Y, so I'm gonna round those off and put 180. And then I'm gonna take this guy, rotate him the other direction, so his backside, so this will be 180 on X. 
and then I can start mixing and matching. I'll do 180, oops, 180x, and I'll do 180y. So I start to get a new pattern. And this one can be the same as the first one. And this one again will just rotate, I guess, 180 that way. Cool. So now we have a varied pattern. They don't look all the same. They look kind of um, different. And you can keep rearranging this more if you want to. Uh, let's say I wanted to zero that back out. And maybe just make this one 180. Cool. So that looks a little more interesting. All right, so that creates the boards. Now I'll start duplicating this now that I've made some randomization. Control D to duplicate. Slide this down. Slide this out. And this will become our bench. And then Control D to duplicate. Slide this to the other side. And this is the other seats. And because again, one has been textured, uh, they all come out that way. So I don't have to keep re-unwrapping UVs all the time. Uh, now let's take this guy. Control D to duplicate and rotate them around. So I'm going to rotate them this way, round off on numbers and just say 90, and then rotate them this way, which is going to be again 90, and then we'll go to move, and I guess somewhere about here, make them a little bit longer, and then move them down, and maybe scale them a little shorter. All right, and check the reference image again. So we have that side uh, horizontal board that's holding up the seat. Let's create another one. So Control D, slide it forward of that board. And then E for rotate. We'll rotate this one at a sharp angle. Then we'll scale. If your scale isn't looking the same direction as the board, in other words, you can scale it like this. Uh, if you hold the R key for scale, and then you click with the left mouse and hold down while you're still holding R. You can change between object and world. World space will scale it kind of like this in relation to the grid coordinates. But holding R, holding left click, you can go to object, which will scale in relation to what the object is facing. So I'm going to scale this down until it looks like it's uh, proportionally where we need it to be. And let's move it up so that the bottom cor uh, corner is in the top of the grid and the top corner is also touching the wood so it looks like it's perfectly matching now so let's slide this over and the problem now is that we have the corner of the wood not quite touching where it needs to touch so I'm going to go and take right click on the object go to vertex mode and drag select through it I don't want to click just one because you're going to miss the other one so turn it a side view and drag across, so I'll just grab both that way. And then I can start rearranging this, pull this upwards, and slide it over. Same with this one. Drag across and then slide it into position. Alright, so there's that wooden box. I could probably slide this a little further outwards. Okay, back to object mode, holding the right click. And then let's take this guy, Control D to duplicate slide them over here, then let's go rotate, and I'll rotate them all the way around, and that looks like it's probably going to be a 90, and these are probably going to be zeros, or not, looks like I'll just be guesstimating, okay, that's probably good enough, let's continue to slide that the rest of the way. And this piece needs one more, so Control D to duplicate, slide it up to here, R for scale, and scale that in. All right, so now I have lots of wooden blocks creating this side, and let's create the other side. So take all four of these, Control D to duplicate, W for move, and slide these over here. And to kind of keep it uniform um, and symmetrical. I'm going to take the outer two and pull those back inwards. This way it kind of matches this horizontals on the inside of the table and the diagonals on the outside. And that pretty much finishes up the picnic table. Um, we have the basic shape now and it uh, all has wood grain. They all share the same exact textures. If I pull up the UV textures, uh, they all share exactly the same, but they're also kind of randomized in a way. 
so that helps it look a little more unique. Uh, we also want to add a little more realism to the edge of the table instead of having such a sharp corner. I'm going to grab everything and go to Edit Mesh, go to Bevel and Settings, and 0.5 should work, so let's press Apply. And you can see that it angles off all the edges, so it makes it less likely to cut you when you're sitting down, even though it's digital. Uh, it makes it feel more realistic. So if you look in close, uh, you can see it has that more realistic um, texture or shape to it. And if I reference back to the original image, you can start to see that it has a pretty close uh, match. If I put like extra side pieces in there, I'm um, working with bolts and extra little wood pieces here to kind of match it as close as possible. But you get the idea of how to just keep manipulating and moving around pieces of wood. Um, we also want to decorate the top of the table. I could slide these in closer if I wanted to have less of a gap also. Um, but let's make a plate and a cup. So I'm going to go to this uh, cylinder right here. And that creates the cylinder down there. Let's go to move. And I want to put this on top of the table. All right. Looks like it's sitting on there. Then let's go to, I guess, subdivision caps. And let's put three, I guess. Yeah, three should do it, and that should do it for top and bottom, not that we can see the bottom too well. Uh, so then we'll go to face mode. And I'm going to select from the side all of these, and then that'll grab the top and the side, but I don't want the side, so hold control and grab, and I can deselect all the sides. So now I just have the top selected. Now I'm going to move this down so it creates more of a uh, flatter kind of plate. And then I can go and take the edge, edge mode, double click on this, and scale this one closer to that, and pull it down a little bit, and then go to this edge, double click, and pull this down. Um, I guess let's make this a little wider, and pull it down. And then we'll go to vertex mode, grab the vertex, and pull that down until it's low enough to look like a plate. Then let's take the outer edge, let's go to edge mode, double click to select the whole border, then drag this up to get the rim of the plate, and that might be fine right there, or I could pull it off further, or I could double click and scale this in a little more, depending on how you want the plate to look. Alright, and that creates a plate Go to object mode. All right, and let's center the pivot. It's kind of a little above the plate, so I'm going to go modify center pivot. And that puts the pivot a little more in the center. And now let's go and create a cup. So I'll repeat the process. Let's take um, the cylinder. Let's move it to the top of the table. And that looks like the top. Let's move it over to the side. And then let's um, set the subdivision caps to two, uh, even though I guess, well, let's set it back to one, because I don't need the subdivision caps to be sitting on the bottom side, there's extra polygons I don't need down there. So I'm going to go take the whole thing and scale it inwards, so it's about the size of a cup, maybe a little bit taller, then move it down until it touches again, then let's go to edge mode. I'll take the top edge, double click to grab the whole perimeter, R for scale, and I'm going to widen the top of the cup a little bit more. Then let's go right click to face mode, select the whole top, hold control and deselect the bottom, and now I can go to extrude. So I'm going to click the extrude button once, then click the scale button, and now I can grab the middle scale right here and scale that in, and then uh, repeat the last command is G so we can extrude again. And now I can take the blue arrow and pull that straight down so it looks like it's probably deep enough for the, the cup. Looks like it's popping out the side here. So let's go to click on the scale and then scale it inwards. Then right click to object mode and we now have a cup. So we have a plate and a cup and I can spend the time and unwrap these as well. Um, but for now I'm just going to leave them uh, whitish color uh, so we can move on to the next part um, and we have this pivot sitting in the middle of the cup so everything seems to be working if we want to put the pivot at the bottom 
Uh, this way, when you place your object, you just, you know, the pivot is always sitting on the bottom. I can take, and this is kind of a shortcut, um, insert will bring you to the pivot mode so I can move the pivot. Uh, without insert, I can move the cup, but with insert the key on the keyboard, now when I move, I'm moving the pivot by itself. So if I want to move the pivot downwards, I can use the green arrow, but I can also snap it. So V for Victor, or Vertex, is the shortcut to Vertex Snap. So I'm going to hold V on the keyboard, and instead of grabbing from the center, I'm going to grab just this green arrow, and it'll snap down wherever the mouse is floating, so it's, it's only vertically snapping, it's not actually moving left and right. So I'm going to Vertex Snap it to the edge here, press Insert, and now I've snapped it directly to the bottom of the cup. All right, and that should work for that. Um, so now we're ready to, uh, assuming you texture these things or whatever, um, you could quickly go into planar mapping, put a planar map on this, and it looks like it already has some UVs. I could adjust these a little bit more if I wanted to. Um, and this one also has a little bit of a map on it, uh, but I'm going to hold off on the wrapping for that. Uh, so the next thing is to get this ready for the game engine. So as you can see here we have a whole bunch of boards and we probably don't need all these boards that are separate. We probably want this to be one piece. So I'm going to grab all of these boards and don't forget the back side. If you hold control and shift you can grab everything remaining. And so that selects the whole, pic whole picnic table. Let's go to mesh, combine and that'll merge it into one object. So now when I click off it and click it once, it selects everything because it's one entire piece now. All right, and combining is not necessarily permanent. You can always uh, separate them later. Close out that. Uh, and I have a lot of history that I don't need to be taking into the game engine, so I'm going to erase that. So edit, delete by type, history. That'll erase out all the history of the um, picnic table, makes it nice and clean, and I'm going to call this picnic table. It makes it nice and easy when I put this in Unity to know which object I'm picking on. Alright, so that's good to go. Uh, the next thing, we're going to repeat the process. This doesn't have any history, but it does have some numbers on here for transformations. So I'm going to reset that, and the cup also has a bunch of uh, numbers on it and history. So I'll take both at once, edit, delete by type history, even though only one is history, and then while both are selected, modify freeze transformations, which will erase all the, the numbers on the side, so now they'll default back to this position. So if I ever move it, and I take these and zero them out, it puts it back to its original location. But the pivot is still centered on the bottom of the cup because I haven't moved the pivot, I've just set everything to zero. All right, so that cleans that up. Um, so the next thing is, to export this. I want these to be separate objects so that later in Unity I can rearrange these wherever I want them to go. Uh, so I'm going to leave them separate and just select everything as a group. So now that they're all selected, they can all be exported as one piece, but still separate and unique. I won't be able to move the wooden benches, but I can move the plates because they're not attached, but they're being sent as one file outwards. So let's go to File, Export Selection, and I'm going to call this uh, picnic table and put this on the desktop so it's easy to find. All right, and now we're ready for the game engine. So let's go pull up Unity, Unity 5, and let's create a new project. Um, if you already have an existing project with this uh, sword project we worked on, um, just go import it into that one. Uh, if you have, if you don't have a new project yet, uh, this is how you would make one. Um, yeah, I, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll redo how to make one, um, even though I could import it into the sword project. All right, so this is what's it going to be called. So I'm going to call this picnic. Yeah picnic table project and it's going to save on the desktop and it's 3D. So let's create the project. Uh, 
All right, and here's the uh, setup of Unity again. So if you're already opening up your sword project, you already have everything organized here. You would just go um, asset, import new asset, and just start bringing it in, uh, which I'm going to do anyway because I don't have anything in the scene right now. So import new asset. Uh, this will be on the desktop. And I don't need the original image, the reference copy. I need the picnic table FBX. So I'm going to import that one. It's going to pop it right into here. And I also need um, assets, import new asset. I need the texture as well. So let's import that. And then let's make this a little more cleaner. So let's create a folder for models. And let's create a folder for textures. And this one got stuck inside the other one, so I'll pull it out. So the texture will go inside textures, picking table as a model. And if I look at this now, uh, let's take the picnic table, drag it into the scene, and it's microscopic, so we need to change the settings right here. Scale factor of 10. Scroll down and press apply, and that should enlarge it for us. Um, we also don't have wooden textures on here, so I need to take the wood plank and drop it on there. But the wood plank is missing the wood plank, so I'm gonna take this texture and drop it into the main map. So now it applies on here. So now when I zoom in, I can see that there's uh, wood texture on our picnic table. These by default have the Lambert one attached. Uh, otherwise I'd have different materials for those as well. Uh, we also need a ground plane. So game object 3D plane. So now the table's on a ground plane. Uh, we didn't, when we exported the Pivot is centered, but in Unity, you can see the numbers aren't right because I just randomly dropped it, dragged and dropped it. So if I zero this back out, zero, 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 actually that did it to ground plane. Click on the picnic table, same thing, it's also not zeroed. All right, so by zeroing it, it centered the picnic table directly on the world space, zero, zero, and the same thing with the plane. And so now they're perfectly sitting on the ground because they were zeroed out in Maya before they went into Unity. All right, so this is the picnic table. Um, the next step is to uh, add some collision on here. Also, we have the option now that we have a picnic table. If I click off and I don't have anything selected, if I click it once in the picnic table, I can move this as one whole big piece, just like as if it was combined. But if I click it a second time, I can grab specifically the picnic table and not the cup and plate. And that's because what I'm grabbing here, the first time I click it, is the main parent. And then I can uniquely grab what's inside of here. So if I wanted to move this around, which I should have renamed it in Maya before I exported, because um, you can see here it's a lot better when you name things in Delato history so you know what you're grabbing instead of P cylinder 1 and 2. Uh, so I can rearrange these things. I can grab what I want, move them. I can duplicate it by holding Control and pressing D. And now I can have another cup and Control D. Um, looks like they duplicated the whole group. Control Z on that. Grab the other cylinder. Control D. And now I have another plate. All right, and as you can see that we can keep reduplicating these things as much as we want. And clicking it once will allow us to move it all as one big contained group because that's the main parent right here. Uh, the next step is to take this guy and drag him back into the project folder right here. And this will create a prefab. So now if I drag this prefab into the scene, it's going to be exactly the same as the other one. But I can still make unique changes that doesn't affect the, uh, the other picking table. I can rearrange as much as I want. Or grab it once and just move all these at once. Uh, they might also be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to take, actually I can do this with the prefab. Also grab the prefab picnic and set this to 2.5 by 2.5 by 2.5 and it'll adjust everything in the scene. So now it's a little larger, a little more accurate in size. All right, and if I play now, I'm not gonna really see much. So let's go add a controller, or game character in here. Game object, asset, import package, characters. And then press import and wait for this bar to scroll through.
almost there. All right, and let's organize this a little more. Close that, that, and that. And let's make a new folder called prefabs. So prefabs is in prefabricated stuff, already made type things. So I'll put that organized there. We'll take the standard assets, characters, first person controller, prefab, and first person controller, drop them in there. Move them so he's not sticking in the ground plane, so he's floating above it. And now when I press play, and slide game mode over here. I can see that there's two picking tables in the scene. Neither of these have collision at the moment, so I'm just kind of walking through them. Uh, so I need to go put some collision on here. Slide that over. Uh, in order to get the collision on here, I can either click this object and go to add component. And I can put for physics a box collider or a mesh collider. A uh, box collider will just create a box for you. So you can kind of kind of scale that where you want it to go. Or right click, remove component. I can add a mesh collider, which will use the... Um, Actually, there's no mesh on there yet, so it's not really doing much for us. So if we make our own custom collision, we can define where the collision box is. We could use the same mesh, let's say. I could take the picnic table mesh and put it inside there, but that's going to be a lot of polygons that are kind of unnecessary. We don't need to have specific collision that the character can climb through every little hole. It's just better to save the polygons and save the collision calculations and just make a basic box. So. In order to update an object that's already been put into Unity, let's go back to Maya and let's go create our custom collision inside of Maya. So I'm going to create a new box and there's our box. Let's scale it a bit larger and then start refining. So let's scale this shorter, move it out. What I'm trying to do now is uh, get as close as I can to scaling uh, the actual size for the picnic table to wherever I want the boundary borders to be. Let's go to face mode and move this upwards so it's sitting right on top of the grid and then I'll take this side actually no, let's go to object mode of this and mesh tools insert edge loop and I'm going to slice it right around the middle of this box so now when I go to face mode I can take this one and this one, both selected at once, holding the shift key to grab them, press extrude, and I can take the blue arrow and pull out both wings of the table. Looks like one's a little bit shorter or longer, so I'll just specifically grab that and pull that back in. Uh, both should be a bit taller, so I'll grab both of those, pull them up to there, and now I have a custom collision. Let's go back to object mode. And this will be our collision. So we're now at 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So 19 polygons to create this collision rather than the original um, picking table, which would have been a lot more. So let's clean up this one. Edit, delete by type history. Modify, freeze transformations. Uh, four on the keyboard's x-ray so I can see through it. Let's center the pivot so it matches with the other one in zero, 0, so insert on the keyboard, hold the X snap or X key, middle mouse drag to the center of the world space, and turn off insert, and that puts the pivot in the middle of world space, so it matches with the uh, picnic table. Let's rename this and call this Collision. And might as well call the plate the plate. And the cup the cup. Alright, so everything will have its own unique name. And we're going to update the object we already have. So, the collision doesn't need any kind of coloring or unwrapping. It's just going to calculate polygons and where you're going to bump into things. So let's select everything in the scene, or everything that we're going to export again. And let's return back to export selection and call it the same exact name, just click on it and overwrite it. So export selection, yes, replace it. All right, let's go back to the desktop now, which I have right here. So this is the newer file, but Unity created its own folder. So let's open a new folder. So I can drag and drop, desktop, 
So this is the Unity project folder, which has all the folder tree of assets and our prefab and our models. So take the model and this is the older picnic table. So if I take the new one and drag and drop, it'll say, do you want to replace the older one with the newer one? And the newer one has the collision and renamed uh, cup and plate. And it's a little bit larger file size. We'll just say yes. So we'll, double, we'll click on that one. It updates it in the folder tree. So when I go back to Unity, it'll automatically update inside of here. Uh, the reason that the cup and plate disappeared is because they're no longer using the same name. This right here, piece cylinder one, is missing, missing its mesh because it doesn't know what it's called anymore. It doesn't have a piece cylinder one anymore. So I need to rename these things as well. This one I'm gonna call cup and plate and we need to attach the mesh back on there. So if we had named it right the first time, we would have been fine. But in case you want to change names and you see what happens, uh, let's go to the models, picnic table, and you can see we have collision, cup, picnic table, and plate now all named. And here's the meshes that comprise those. So I'm gonna take the cup mesh, click on cup right here, and drag the cup mesh into the missing mesh and it automatically updates. The same thing, plate needs the plate mesh, drag that onto there and it updates the plate. Um, these, I don't know which one's which. Looks like those might have been reversed because one's floating and one's not. So they were probably the opposite ones, but I'll just readjust it. And I can probably just take these, delete them and just reduplicate these. So a new cup and the new plate. All right, so that's that. And we also have, um, so we have the cups, the pink table, and the duplicates. If you want to duplicates, I can take this back to the prefabs and drop them back on top of here. And now it updates the other guy because this now becomes standard. All right. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is uh, apply the custom collision. If for some reason you take your picnic table original model, not the prefab, and drop it in here, you'll see that the custom collision is still sitting on here. Uh, we don't need the custom collision. We can delete that out. All we need, and this will break your original connection, but we don't need the collision on there. It's just a box with a renderer. We need the collision mesh, not the collision object. The mesh is what's going to calculate the collision for us. So we don't really need this guy, it's just to show you that you don't need to keep that collision on your scene. So let's delete that out. All right, this guy needs to add a physics mesh collider, and we need to put the mesh in place for that. So take the collision mesh, drop it inside the collision, and you can see it puts a collision mesh exactly where we need the, um, for the we need the picking table to have collision at. Instead of using all the tiny little curves and angles of the table as collision or a very basic square, we've now made a custom fitting collision. And because this is a prefab, this one hasn't updated yet until you click this one as apply and it'll update the other one now. So now they both have collision because you applied this prefab, which updates the original one in the project to apply to everything. You may not always want to click apply. You may just want to do something to this original prefab. But in this case, we now have collision. And if I press play, if I walk over these tables, you can see that I can't walk through it anymore. I can jump onto it and I can walk off the table, but I can't walk through it anymore. So I jump on the table, jump on the next one. And you can make, um, physics and stuff so you can bump the plates and all that. We'll cover that uh, later. Uh, so that pretty much covers how to make um, custom collision, how to texture, how to model something, and how to put everything in Unity. And we've already covered how to create the buildable scene. Uh, so that should be everything we need to worry about right now. And we just keep adding more objects uh, as such and updating. And again, updating, you can just drag and drop your files in the folder system to overwrite your two folders or your two files and that's about it
So actually, as an extra bonus, uh, we'll cover how to make things a rigid body so you can bounce them around. Uh, so let's say, for example, we don't want the whole picnic table to bounce around, we just want the cup. So I'm going to click on the cup, and we can add separate uh, components to each thing. So whereas the table has its own stuff, the cup can has it have its own stuff. So we need to add a physics rigid body, which will give it the um, physics. But if I press play at this point, the cup's going to fall through the world because it doesn't have collision. The object as a whole, the pig table does, but not the cup. So I need to add collision as well. So add a box collider, something simple. And now if I press play, the cup, uh, let's go over here. The cup won't fall through the world anymore. Unfortunately, uh, you can't really move the cup. And the reason is because the cup has uh, too much weight to it, it's too strong. So change the mass to something like 0.1. And let's check out that one. So now when you bump into the cup, all right, still not moving. Let's try a little bit lower, 0 0.05. If it weighs less enough, or if it doesn't weigh too much, you should be able to bounce this thing around. Uh, nope, still jumping over it. All right, let's try a little bit lower, 0 0.01, and press play. It might also be that the cup is just really, really small. So let's make the cup a little bit bigger. We'll take this guy and scale him a little bit larger. And then run up to this big cup. And I kicked it off the edge of the world. <laughs> Don't know where it went, but it disappeared. So I guess I was just too big and it wasn't uh, bumping into it. Uh, so let's make a little more mass to this. Let's put a point one on there and make him a little bigger. So let's just say this is a trash can now. A trash can sitting here, somewhere on this, almost on the floor. All right, so now if I bump into the trash can, you can see the trash can goes flying. So I guess the cup was too small to pick up my footprints. Uh, but yeah, that was point 0.1, so point 0.1 might be too small. Let's just try one again with a larger object. And yeah, I'm bumping it. You can see it's being pushed around. Oops, push it off. Down, down, down it goes. All right, so that's how you do uh, uh, movable objects. You just have to have a collision on it, and you have to have a rigid body, and you can start moving things. Uh, but apparently, if it's too small, it doesn't pick up all the time. And that covers how to do that.